So if you follow me on LinkedIn or Facebook uh, or other social media, uh, one of the things that I do is I sort of advise people on uh, sort of data analytics career pathways, okay? Uh, so what they should do, what they should learn. Now, one of the questions that I keep getting asked is, is there a roadmap to being a data analyst? If you're new to my channel, my name is Shawful, and in this channel, we discuss all things data. Now, before we begin, if you're a budding analyst or if you're a seasoned pro, or even just someone who just has an interest in data, please do subscribe to my channel. Please do ring the bell icon and make, to make sure that you stay up to date with all the um, helpful advice and tips that I have to offer. Now, a few years ago, when data analysts used to ask me about a roadmap, I would say, look, it depends where you are, what you want to learn, what industry you want to go to. But more and more questions I've been getting around this, around this area, um, and the more I've witnessed, I've actually realize that there is actually a, a sort of top level roadmap that you can follow to be a data analyst. So what I thought I'd make this video uh, to talk about that. So the first thing you should do um, to, to start your journey as a data analyst is to learn Excel. Okay, now no matter what job you do, and I've done a video on this before, is that Excel is still core to uh, being a data analyst. And one of the things I find interesting is that I find a lot of data analysts are learning Python or SQL or R or Tableau or Power BI, but they don't know Excel that well. And, and I've just encountered a recent example where I've uh, got someone who's been learning Python, I gave them a task in Excel and I found that they didn't know how to use Excel very well. So the first thing you should do is learn Excel. And especially if you're still studying, you'll have access uh, to Excel at university um, and you should be able to get enough uh, practice on it. One of the things that you should learn as part of learning Excel is getting access to sort of data and um, using that data. Now, you know, unless you have access to real world data or have access to, sorry, commercial data, which is very unlikely unless you're in a job, you can have, you, there is lots of data sources that you can have access to. So for example, you can go to government websites, you can go to uh, things like Kaggle, Microsoft or, Microsoft or other um, sort of uh, platform providers, they have data uh, within their thing for testing, okay, or for practice, okay. So what you can do is, um, download those data sources. Now, some of them you might find won't fit in Excel, but you're not interested in answering any questions when you're learning Excel. What you're interested in is doing the functions and the uh, sort of features within Excel, being able to utilize those, okay? So you want to be able to start from everything from, can I do the basic mathematics in Excel? So means, averages, sum, uh, sorry, mean and average is the same, sum, uh, 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 max, min, uh, ranges, standard deviations. Can you run those basic statistics in Excel? Okay, then you've also got things like, can I create a pivot table? Can I transpose the data? Uh, can I dedupe the data? Can I merge the data? There's loads of things that can be done in Excel and you've got to learn the functions um, that allow you to do that, okay? And the only way you can do that is practice, okay? If you get stuck on something, look on Google, enough resources out there, but learn Excel, okay? So that's the first thing in your roadmap. If you don't think you're good with Excel, then I wouldn't progress to anything else. I'll stick with Excel and do that. And like I said, uh, a subset of that is finding data that you can work with. And like I said, and as I've mentioned, go to government websites, go to things like Kaggle and other uh, sort of providers of, of technologies who have this data like Microsoft, uh, like Google. The second uh, step on the roadmap that I would advise people to do is learn SQL. So once you're very good at Excel, move to SQL. Okay, now again, you can download uh, MySQL or Server Exp um, Microsoft, Microsoft uh, SQL Express and you can start practicing with that, okay? Um, if you've obviously got access to an actual uh, SQL server, um, whether it's in your job or university, that's brilliant. But if you haven't, you can download a version on your PC, you can upload data into a single table and you can at least practice SQL queries, okay? Now again, the same things you've done in Excel, averages, um, sum, max, min, ranges, deduplication, pivoting, transposing, merging, all those things that you've done in Excel, see if you can replicate them in SQL, okay? And the idea is here that you are learning what X SQL is uh, good at or, or is capable of doing so that you know what are the features and functionalities uh, are in that application. The other thing or part of that roadmap I find is that a lot of people who want to get a data analyst, especially if they don't have a technical background, don't know how to install applications, okay? So when you are learning how to download SQL, learn how to actually um, install it. Don't get someone else to do it. Don't say to someone, oh, can you just install this for me? Learn it because when you go to jobs, you'll be asked to download uh, uh, and run other applications, okay, like Python. So for example, Python will usually come in a package called Anaconda and it's got Jupyter Notebook in there and, and you can run Python in that, okay? Now, if you don't know how to download applications and install them and uh, run them, then you, you will struggle in a job, okay? You can't keep asking people because these are the fundamental things that you need to know as a data analyst before you even start the 
job, okay? So make sure that when you are, are gonna be using SQL Server, uh, or gonna be using SQL, sorry, and you need to download the server version either on your, P on your PC, um, whether it's MySQL or C uh, Microsoft SQL, um, that you do it yourself. Don't get someone else to do it, learn it, okay? Uh, and that will also apply to the other applications that I talk about along the roadmap. So the next or the third thing in the roadmap is learn Python. Okay, now the reason I say this now is because a lot of the time what I'm finding is that um, a lot of organizations, especially in data analysis, are now using Python, especially to manipulate data. So it's worth learning Python. So before you started a job, it's worth learning Python. Now, I don't expect you to learn Python to the skill set um, of, of a data scientist, okay, to so know how to run models, but learn how to use Python to import data, how to manipulate it, how to run exactly the same functions that you run in Excel. Um, but what you're interested in is knowing what, how Python works, how the language of Python works, how it's structured so that you can actually run queries uh, if you're ever asked to do it. So what happens is that when you learn Python, when you start a job, if someone says, oh, can you run this in Python? You're already familiar with it. You're not starting from scratch. So make sure you learn Python. That's number three. Again, you, when you are downloading and installing Python, make sure you do it yourself because you've got to learn how to do that. Sometimes you'll go to um, uh, jobs that where it isn't on your machine and you have to install it yourself and no one else will do it for you. So again, like I said, being able to install applications and run them are fundamental to being a, a data analyst. Step number four is to learn a data visualization tool. Now I would recommend Power BI. If you've learned SQL, I would recommend Power BI. Now the reason I, I recommend Power BI is because what you find is that if you're at university or if you're in a company, you have access to Microsoft and sometimes you'll have access to Power BI. And if you don't, there is a free trial, so that's not a problem, but learn Power BI, okay? you find it's it's much more common in sort of academic situations than in corporate environments, okay? But that's not to say that's the only tool you should learn. If you feel that in the industry you want to work with, they use Tableau or another tool, then feel free to learn that. But learn some form of visualization tool. And if you want my advice on what tool to learn, I would recommend uh, Power BI. It's not that it's better than Tableau or, the, or any of the others. It's just that what I found is that in uh, corporations, in most industries where they're already using Microsoft, they will tend to want to use uh, Power BI. Once you've learned Power BI, feel free and you should actually learn Tableau, maybe even learn Looker Studio. You'll find the principles are the same. So a sub-step of uh, learning a, a visualization tool would be to learn Tableau and potentially uh, Google Looker Studio. Like I said, Tableau will also have a free trial. Uh, Google Looker Studio is free. Um, and there are other tools out there you can look, research yourself like Click, um, which, which will allow you to run data. So step five on the roadmap is to create a portfolio. Now, a lot of the time when people are creating a portfolio, they just want to show off what they can do. Now, what I find is that's really great. It shows that you know how to use all the features or functionality of say Power BI or SQL, but actually also try to answer a question. It could be, it could be a made up question. So like I said, there's a lot of government data out there. So you might download data on, I don't know, road traffic accidents and hospital hospital admissions and you might say, is there a correlation or I'm going to do a visualization to show, you know, how road traffic accidents and uh, hospitalization, you know, correlate or how they look visually or what's the relationship. Okay. So, but try and answer a question because what it will show uh, a prospective employer that you've thought about um, how to structure your analysis. You haven't just run loads of analysis and just put nice really pretty charts uh, and graphs together, but you've actually thought about what kind of analysis you want to run and you've run those analysis. And in your portfolio if you are actually formulating hypotheses or questions or business questions and you're showing how you're answering them then it will show to the prospective employer that you know that the um, analysis that you do must have an impact okay on the business so therefore they'll see that you've tried to answer a question and how you've tried to answer that question and then the final thing on this roadmap is to do a real world problem okay now here it's really difficult a lot of people don't have access to a real world problem but like I said there's a lot of public data sets that you might want to use so for example if you're in the UK currently we know that there is an issue with the NHS, we know there are waiting times, maybe you could uh, look at that as a case study and understand what's the impact, you know, what, what is the choice happening with waiting time? Are people, how much longer are people waiting uh, for, let's say, elective surgery uh, or A&E? You know, what is the pattern? Is it seasonality? Is it growing year, month on month? Is it growing year on year? You know, what, what kind of trends and patterns can you identify that will help you understand what uh, is happening with waiting time? Or if you can, ideally, like I said, get access to um, a real business, data from a real business, that's really good. Now, I, I do advise people this, and that some people actually have uh, gone back to me and said it's work, which is approach small businesses, okay, who may have a website, who may have uh, some data, like a, a, an email uh, system where they've got CRM data, 
any business. So just ask a few businesses, say, look, have you collect data anywhere um, that I could potentially analyze and help you answer a business question? And the reason I, I recommend that as the final step is that as an employer, it will be really good to see someone who's actually analyzed real world data, actual real business data, because that's quite different to sort of generic data that you either use in academia, or even if you download from these government websites, they're usually quite structured. Whereas real world data is quite messy, you've had to do a lot of cleaning, and then you've obviously had to identify a business problem, and then you've answered that business problem. So if you could do, as a final step, a real world business problem, do that and then put that in your portfolio and try and flag that as your sort of primary um, uh, item in your portfolio, your primary piece of analysis in your portfolio. So it shows prospective employers um, your uh, capabilities and what you're able to do. So if you're a new analyst or someone who's aspiring to be a data analyst, that's the top level roadmap of how to become a data analyst. Like I said, number one, learn Excel. Number two, learn SQL. As part of that, learn how to download and install applications. Number three, learn Python. Number four, learn a visualization tool. Like I said, I'd recommend Power BI, but feel free, Tableau and others are really good as well. Number five, as I said, uh, create a portfolio. Um, and actually, the thing I should mention on the portfolio is try and host it somewhere. A lot of people do portfolios on PDFs um, or they'll send it across as a PowerPoint. It's not really good. It's, try, it's really good to uh, create a link somewhere and host it. Um, and then number six, is to do a real world business uh, case study, okay? Like I said, if you can't get access to a, a small business's data or a business's data, um, then use public data, but make sure it answers a, a, a problem that's current that the employer looks at it and goes, oh, actually, I can relate to that. I can see why that's the problem, why you've analyzed the data to answer that problem. Well, thank you for watching my channel. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do like the video. Of course, do subscribe to the channel and um, please ring the bell icon so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thank you.